What's up, guys? Welcome to Carretaro. Buenos dias, I'm here in Querétaro. I arrived last night and today is my first day of going around. Unfortunately, I am still suffering from this fatigue from having COVID. It is not going away. I'm spending a lot of time just laying in my hotel room and sleeping, but I forced myself to come out today since I'm here and explore Querétaro. So I'm gonna hit a couple museums, a couple churches, check out the colonial center of the city and hopefully make it through the day without having to go back to the room and sleep. Starting off the day at this little cafe, Cafeteria de Barrio, which is on the Jardin here. Having a lovely cafe latte and a little piece of coffee cake to get my day started. Let's go. First stop is El Jardín Zenia, one of the many charming squares in Carretaro. It was once part of the orchard of the Templo de San Francisco across the street. Named after the former governor responsible for its restoration, Governor Benito Zenia, it is a great spot to sit under the shade of the leafy trees and people watch. <laughs> The first church built in Querétaro, El Templo de San Francisco, towers over the plaza. It and the attached cloister are all that remains of the once larger complex that included several chapels. Its interior features a newer neoclassic design, replacing what was reputedly a masterpiece of the Baroque design. Begun in the 16th century, its construction and several alterations occurred over time well into the 19th century. Across the street, the Andador Cinco de Mayo is just one of the many pedestrian-only streets in the city center, lined with restaurants, shops, and monuments. El Danzante Conchero Chichimeca honors the ceremonial dance of the indigenous peoples of the region, numerous different groups whom the Spanish and Aztec called Chichimeca. The Plaza de Armas is the city's main square, which, unlike most Mexican cities, does not front a church. Surrounded by restaurants and beautiful colonial mansions, the plaza's surroundings tell the tale of Querétaro's past, which I'll get to later. Too many protesters today. <laughs> Thank you. 
A few blocks from the Plaza de Armas lies this 17th century mansion with an eerie past, now a museum called La Casa de la Zacatecana. The impressive mansion is filled with a collection of antiquities dating from the period, but more interesting is the story of La Zacatecana and her ghost, who supposedly occupies the building. The legend goes that a prominent couple moved to Querétaro from Zacatecas due to her husband's work. Because the husband was often away on business, rumors spread that the woman, called La Zacatecana by her neighbors, was having an affair with one of her servants. After the husband never returned home, people began to speculate that she had her servant and lover murder him. Fearing her crime would be discovered, she also killed the servant, burying both bodies under the stables of the house. Sometime later, the body of La Zacatecana was found dead lying in a nearby plaza. Her body was then hung on the balcony of the house for all to see, perhaps as a warning to any unfaithful women who passed by. The murderer was never caught. When the house was remodeled, the skeletal remains of two bodies were found, perhaps those of the husband and servant. Subsequent residents of the home never stayed for very long, claiming the mansion to be haunted. Outside, in the patio of the home, an illusion appears in the bedroom window of the Zacatecana, believed to be the spirit of the infamous woman herself. It is gorgeous here, another beautiful Mexican city. I love it. Colorful, gorgeous architecture, super sunny. The only issue is Sunday, which, you know, lots of people out. So the center is very crowded. Kind of hard to get the shots I want with so many people, but yeah, it's, it's really lovely here. I like this city a lot and not a lot of tourists, which is awesome. And I love all the pedestrian only streets. It's great. Headed to Mukal, which is a museum of calendars, which is supposedly was the first of its kind in the world and is the museum to see in Querétaro from what I read. So I'm headed there now. Started by the Landon family, owners of a popular Mexican calendar company, Mucal, or El Museo del Calendario, was the first of its kind in the world. Housed in a beautifully restored 17th century mansion, complete with stunning gardens and a lovely cafe, the exhibits are dedicated to the history, development, and artistry of the calendar. Starting with a wooden replica of the Sunstone, the giant Aztec calendar displayed in Mexico City, the exhibits progress to the well-known paintings of famous Mexican artists used for the calendars. Even more fascinating are the halls showcasing a calendar from every year of the 20th century and the commercial calendars, which showcase images relating to each decade. Si vas a zapatear, hazlo con mucho esmero. 
Si vas a zapatear, hazlo con mucho esmero Llegaron las bailadoras y ellas llegaron primero Llegaron las bailadoras y ellas llegaron primero Jesus wants you to smoke And so does Mary Spilled ketchup on my skirt. Bread. Transmissions. A butcher shop. Appliances. There's also exhibits showcasing the restoration of the house, the artifacts discovered, and how the calendars are made. Okay, time for lunch. Going to Restaurante Las Monjas, the nun's restaurant, which Lonely Planet tells me is good. Let's find out. Well, they had no tables available and it didn't look like anyone was leaving soon. So let's go find someplace else. Okay, you guys know that mole, especially Oaxacan mole, is my favorite thing. Let's see how they do. Good. I approve. Hola, buenas tardes. It is my second day in Querétaro. I am having lunch right now at restaurant bar 1810. Uh, I spent my morning today looking for new sneakers because my sneakers were shot and my feet hurt. So I did that and I also got my hair cut. Yay, let's, you know. I still have to keep the hat on because the sun is so strong and I'm bald. But anyway, I am having, for the very first time, I've never eaten it, chiles en nogada, which is a famous dish, a chili pepper stuffed with ground meat and I think raisins uh, and pomegranate in a creamy walnut sauce, which that just reminds me, I should take my lactate pill. Don't want to have a emergency situation. That is good. There's nuts in it as well. It's good. I like it. Okay, that was good, but not very filling. It was like really tiny and there was hardly any meat in it. So I had to order something else because I'm a fat pig. So I got enchiladas queretanas, which are enchiladas typical of Querétaro uh, with chicken and cheese and vegetables and cream and yada 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 so let's see Good. there's potato also a little spicy just a little nothing i can't handle this meal is going to be expensive though i picked this place for the atmosphere because it's really nice but it's a little pricey and fancy pants. You know, I'm not one for fancy pants. When you get caught between the moon and New York City, best that you can do. Well, 
Okay, let's go check out what the rest of Querétaro has to offer. We're gonna start with the Palacio del Gobierno, which was the house of La Corregidora. The Palace del Gobierno is now the executive power of the state of Querétaro, but it was once the home of Josefa Ortiz de Dominguez, or as she is more commonly known, La Corregidora, the infamous wife of the Corregidor, the royal judicial of the city. She notoriously conspired in the rebellion against the crown, leading to Mexican independence. The story claims that after being suspected of supporting the rebellion, she was locked in her room, but managed to whisper important information she had learned through the keyhole, prompting the infamous Miguel Hidalgo to declare war against the Spanish. Only able to visit it on Saturdays and Sundays at very specific times. These schedules and things being closed all the time is really getting on my nerves. Okay, walking now to Templo de la Cruz, where supposedly there is a tree that miraculously grows thorns shaped like crosses. It's probably gonna be closed. Let's find out. So, the churches were open, but the convent part, where the tree is, is not open today. Winning. I might come back tomorrow to see it. I may not, but it's the next day. I'm waiting for the tour to start. According to legend, it was on this site that the Spanish defeated the indigenous Chichimeca tribes only after they surrendered, having witnessed an apparition of St. James in the sky. Thus, the city was founded here. Commemorating the miraculous event, the Spanish built the church here as well as a Franciscan monastery still in existence today. There is a ton of history in this spot. The aqueduct ended here in this cistern where residents of the city would fill their buckets. The corrigedor, husband of la corrigedora, was imprisoned here as well. It was also the headquarters of Maximilian I, emperor of Mexico. But more curiously, it's where a Franciscan monk, Friar Antonio Margil de Jesus, planted his walking stick in the ground, from which sprung trees that grow thorns in the shape of a cross. Headed to the uh, aqueduct. There is a gigantic aqueduct here in Carretero. So I'm gonna go check that out while I'm in this area. The sun is super strong, beating down on me like, whoo, muy caliente. One of Mexico's largest, Querétaro's aqueduct is 4,200 feet long and has 74 arches. Completed in 1738 and financed by the Marquis Juan Antonio, the push for its construction came from an unlikely source, which I'll talk about a little later. Just me laying around for like an hour waiting for the sun to go down so I can see the aqueduct lit up at night and get a shot of it. On 
On the way back, I found an awesome vintage diner that, being from New Jersey, felt just like home. I haven't gotten my food yet, but I absolutely love this fucking place. Everybody's looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. These are really good. I love it here. Like, if I lived in Caretero, I would be here every night. Well, you can't win them all. Hola, buenos dias. My last day in Querétaro. I'm gonna try and do all the things that I could not do, either due to my COVID fatigue or because everything in this city is closed all the time. So I'm gonna start off with La Casa de la Marquesa, which is a historical building with a really cool story, which I'll tell you, but it is now a very, very fancy hotel. And I really wanna look inside because <laughs> it looks beautiful when I pass by it. So I'm gonna see if they will let me just go in and hopefully I can get some shots of the inside because it looks gorgeous. Let's find out. Besides being a gorgeous 18th century Baroque mansion and now a hotel, the Casa de la Marquesa tells a tale that's known by every resident of Carretaro. The story goes that the Marquis Juan Antonio, a rich and powerful Spanish nobleman, although married, fell in love with his wife's niece, who happened to be a nun. After rejecting his multiple advances, she asked him to prove his love for her by bringing clean drinking water into the 18th century city, as the common people were getting sick and dying from contaminated water. Oh, and she also threw in building the most beautiful house anyone has ever seen. Convinced this would win her over, he built the new famous aqueduct and connected it to the fountains all around the city, as well as building the house. Her response was a mere thank you and she remains faithful to God. That was pretty cool. So it looks like if you ask nicely and she'll let you come in for like five minutes and just stand in the lobby and take a look around. So that was really nice. Let's see if the Cathedral of Careto is open today, which every time I have passed by, it never is. Let's find out. The cathedral, also known as the Church of St. Philip Neri, was completed in 1804 and is one of the last colonial structures built in Carretaro. And the doors are closed. I'm telling you, I have never experienced so many things closed than here in Carretaro. It's driving me crazy. A few blocks away, the spectacular Templo de Santa Rosa de Viterbo stands out for its scroll-shaped flying buttresses, an architectural detail unique to Carretaro. Dedicated to the Italian saint Rosa de Viterbo, the church is a masterpiece of Mexican Baroque architecture. It is the opus magnus of architect Ignacio Mariano de las Casas, who added these mocking faces to the buttresses an 18th century burn to those convinced he couldn't handle the project. The interior is a dazzling display of gold-covered retablos, priceless artwork, and meticulously carved woodwork.
The rectory is now a museum showcasing 200 years of history, like this life-size sculpture of the Twelve Apostles. Next door is the convent, which is now the School of Design and Graphic Art, where in 2016, the remains of a 16th century water system was discovered, validating the longtime legends that tunnels exist beneath Querétaro's homes. Once an open-air channel that supplied water to residents, it was covered in the 17th century to avoid pollution, forming a complex network of tunnels, which became associated with local legends of ghosts, treasures, and conspiracies. I'm gonna have an early lunch because I had no breakfast. I'm gonna check out this place that I saw only because it's advertising that it has a terrace. So I would like to sit on a terrace for my lunch. Hopefully the food is good. I mean, what the fuck? Well, this is, that's where I wanted to eat. But this is where I'm going to eat. So I saw a Philly cheesesteak on the menu and I just had to do it. One, because it sounds really good, and two, I'm very curious as to how the Mexican spin of Philly cheesesteak is. The bread is spread with um, refried beans, which is interesting, and the meat looks good, and it has onion and gouda cheese, according to the menu. Let's try it. It's not bad. The beans on it had a interesting taste. Yeah, pretty good. Philly con queso. hotel room and I'm gonna have some pedos de monja or nun farts which is I think a perfect way to end my stay in Querétaro. So the story goes that um, this pastry or cookie comes from Barcelona, Spain, where it was invented by an Italian pastry chef. And in Italian, he called it Petti di Monca, which is nuns' chest or breasts. And in Barcelona, they basically mispronounced it. And instead of, and instead of calling it Petti di Monca, they said Pedos de Monja, 
which translates to nun's farts instead of nun's chest. And here in Caretaro, they, you know, altered the recipe and messed with it and made it their own thing. And they are these chocolates. with like a milky filling. Mm. It tastes just like a nun's fart. Mm. They're good. Anyway, that's gonna do it for Caretero. Adios.